salvation, God. Uh -huh. Even when it doesn't seem like we're coming through, God, you're always there. Yes. And as this song says, Lord God, we know you would never leave us. When everybody else may turn their back, Lord God, it was you. It was nobody but you.
How is your attitude towards God? I mean, are you really committed towards God? Allow me to set the scene for you this morning, brother and sister. Allow me to set the scene because we find here David, old man David. He's making a confession dealing with consecration and dealing with the dedication to the Lord. David. He, David, my brother and sister, we find here he begins this song off in verse 1. And David pins in verse 1, he said, Preserve me, O God, for in thee do I put my trust. David said in verse 1, David prays for God to preserve, preserve him. But David was trusted in Facebook. He was trusted in God, not in the government, not in man, not in woman, not in his job, not in his material things, but he was putting all his trust in God. I like that word, preserve, David. I love that word, die. I love that word, preserve, because it also means, watch this, 283 times teach, dog. It's used in the Bible, and each time it gives the idea to keep. But it also means to guard, cause, and it also means to watch. Which suggests to me, David is really starting out saying, God, I need you to guard me. Right, right, right. Oh, I wish I had some help. David really began saying, Lord, I just need you to watch me. And David is really saying, God, I need you to keep me. Is there anybody out there, regardless of where you at, just need God to keep you? Yes, sir. Need God to watch you. Need God to God, and David, he ends verse 1, called, and he moves to verse 2, and David said, Oh, my soul, mm -hmm. thou hast said unto the Lord, he said, Thou art my Lord, my goodness extended not to thee. Oh, now, when I read that, uh, you know, I, 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 I paused for a second because I was trying my best to understand what is it that David is really saying. And through my research, I had to agree with some commentaries at this time because what David pins here when you look at it from the King James is really a bad translation from the original language teach God, I wish I had some help here and the King James, you gotta be careful with King James, sometimes it's confusing and so I understand what men have been saying all the time, I can't understand King James, and so when I looked at the same verse from the original language, from the Hebrew it really paints the picture my brother and sister, it simply means that apart from God's goodness David is saying, I'm there Oh, I wish I had some help. He said, and I know what he said in King, in King James, but he said, really, all that I'm trying to tell you, if I if it wasn't for the Lord. Yes, sir. Matter of fact, one tra translation pins it this way, and I took the liberty to make sure I put it in my notes from the message translation of that same verse, verse 2, Psalm 16. Teach, Dodge, I think I will. He said right here, I say to God, be my Lord. Watch this. Without you, nothing makes sense. God Almighty. He, he said, be my God. He said, without you, nothing. Nothing. Nothing, nothing make nothing makes sense. sense. Nothing oh. make sense. When when was that? I know you don't want me to call your name out, but when was the last time that you were so committed that it just didn't make it didn't make sense? Hey, have you ever been so committed that it just didn't make sense? Folks will look at your musicians and, and wonder, why would you go out and pray and play all the time? the church. Why are you studying music like you do? It's only because you're dedicated. Why? And God has been so good to you that you're so committed that sometimes it blows your own mind that it just don't make don't make don't make sense. David ends verses 1 and 2. He get the verse. Oh, Y'all don't mind what they make all the talk to you this morning. He ends verses 1 and 2 and he get down to verse 3 and David said, and who is all my delight? Word delight simply means my pleasure. In other words, David really said it's my pleasure to do what I do. Though it don't make sense, it's my pleasure. I wish I had some help. David said, in other words, it's my desire to be so committed to you that even when the others don't make when the others look at me all strange and it don't make sense, I'm doing it because I'm trusting God. And the whole picture that David paints here in verse 3, he really watch this. It paints the picture of trusting God. Watch this, it brings our greatest joys. When we trust God, it brings the greatest joys. The world knows nothing 
of this type of joy. That's why Big Mama had it right. They would sing them songs before we got so contemporary. Right. I wish I had some help in here. All Big right. Mama had it right when she was saying, this joy this that I have. I feel like teaching this boy the world that give it and watched it in the world can't take it away. I, I, I thought I'd talk to y'all this morning. So the question I must ask, because I got to move on, the question I must ask, why am I so committed? Why are you so committed? Because we need to answer the question before we leave. Yes, sir. So if we're going to answer the question, my brother and sister, we got to look at the text once again. When David pins here in verses 8 and 9, David said, I have set the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I shall not be moved. David said in verse 9, therefore my heart is glad and my glory rejoices. For, for he said right here, my flesh also shall rest in hope. If you're going to deal with being committed with God, the first thing we got to look at, my brothers and sisters, is number one, because of our hardness. That's why we're committed. That's why it don't make sense. Because of our heart. Look at the text right here. It said right here, verse 1. I, in verse 8, it said, I shall not be moved. Mm -hmm. Oh, my goodness. I shall not be moved. That word hardness that I use here as a way of point number one, it simply means endurance, Carl. It means to endure. Watch this. It comes from a primitive root word. I feel like teaching, David. It comes from a primitive root word. Watch this. To mean to waver. <laughs> it gives the implication to slip. Teach, though, it gives the implication to be shaken or to fall. It carries the idea to get off course. And David said, God been too good to me for me to wait. I wish I had some help in here. David said, He been too good to me for me to slip. I gotta move on. I gotta move on. I feel good this morning. I feel good. I feel good. Watch this. He said, I'm, I'm committed to God. Point number one, because of our hardness. He said, we ought to be committed to God, not only because of our hardness, but because of our happiness. It is right here in the text. He said, my heart is glad. Hmm. My heart is, is glad. That word, the world does not, my brothers and sisters, don't understand gladness. And this word, glad, that David used, he is really used, this usage, teach Dodge, throughout the Bible, is some 95 times. And watch it, it means simply to rejoice. Mm -hmm. David said, I'm so committed that I can just rejoice in here. Watch this. It, it paints the picture, David. David, watch this, David. It paints the picture from the original language when he used glad to translate to rejoice. Watch this. It simply means, watch this, to be enlightened. Mm -hmm. to, watch this. It means to brighten up. And I don't know about you, but it been times in my life when it seemed like it was so dark yes, sir. Right. that when I start thinking about the goodness oh, of God, it just seemed like it just brightened. Good God Almighty. Yes. It just brightened me up. David said, it may not make sense, uh -huh. but it can brighten me up. And I just want to ask somebody this morning, is there anybody out there that know that if you're so committed to God, not only when you have the hardness that you have the endurance, not only my brother and sister, when you have happiness. But then the third thing we got to understand why we're so committed is point number three, because of our honor. Why do I say that? The text said here, my glory rejoices. Mm -hmm. King James said rejoices. Watch the text here. The world does not give us glory. And the more you commit it to man, seem like the more they do not respect you. Teach mm -hmm. dog. The more you commit it to man, the more watch it, the more you go to work. The more you make sacrifices to do what you have to do on your job, the more you have to do in your relationship, it seems like some people never honor you for what you do. But notice what David said here. He said, my glory rejoices. Because what David is doing here, you got to understand what David is trying to do. David is not looking at the now. Teach, though. David is looking in the future. And David is saying, just because you may not honor me here, watch this, I got to go on the other side that will, that will honor me. I got to go, I got to go. I like that Baptist preach. I got to go. Give me five more minutes. There'll be 30 minutes. But just, I true, true. Watch this. Just give me five. Give me five. Give me five. Watch this. 
He said, he said, we're committed to God. Point number one, my brother and sister, we're committed to God because of our hardness. We're committed to God. Number two, because of our, our happiness. He said, we're committed to God. Point number three, because of our, our honor. Then fourthly, as I get ready to close, he said, we're committed to God. Point number four, watch this, because of our hope. Because of our hope. Notice what he said right here in verse 9 of the 16th chapter of a song. He said in verse 9, he said, my flesh also shall rest in hope. My, my flesh also shall rest in hope. Notice what he says here, this word hope that he used in the text. His hope is the product of the commitment that we ought to have to God. A lack of hope indicates, my brother and sister, a lack of commitment. The world, the world, the world does not give us much hope, but the Lord will give us great hope to the committed saints. And I just want to ask tonight, this morning, my brother and sister, I want to ask this morning, is there anybody in here that don't mind saying my hope is in me? Christ Jesus. So it is. So it is. David was committed. Yeah, it's the same. The same David. Don't want to pick me up, David. The same David. Watch this. Yes, he he was a shepherd boy. The same. The same David who was anointed by Samuel. To be king, king of Israel. The same, yeah, the same David that when Saul was king at the time. But the Spirit of the Lord departed from Saul and came upon David. Yes, the same David who was skillful as an instrument to play the instrument of the heart. And the same, the same David, yes, a man of war, the same David, the same David who was the armor bearer of Saul, the same David that was committed to that committed a grievous sin uh, of adultery. Uh, the same David, uh, the same David, uh, I feel like preaching that, uh, that committed sin of that sheep. They called the husband you uh, to be dead. Uh, the Bible said uh, he was committed. Uh, that same David uh, that did so wrong. The Lord said uh, he was committed. Now, and I want to ask somebody here yeah, before I leave you this morning, uh, have you made any mistakes uh, and God forgave you uh, because you committed? Uh, there ain't anybody out there uh, who came short uh, of the glory of God. Uh, but the same God uh, that my baby David uh, can't forgive you. Uh, I believe in coming Proverbs, Proverbs 16, in verse 3, the Bible said, commit your work to the Lord, and your plans will be established. The same, the same, the same God. I heard Solomon say in Proverbs, trust in the Lord. Are you committed to the Lord? Uh, 
without faith, it's impossible to please him. So you have to be committed, my brothers and sisters, not to man, but make sure you're committed to God. And I want to encourage somebody this morning, if you hold on, everything will be all right. I learned, I learned, I learned, I learned musician just to call on the name of Jesus sometimes. Let me know that everything is going to be all right. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Yeah. The answer. I don't care what you're going through. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus.
I say thank you so much. Well, let's bow our head right where we're at as we prepare to give back to the Lord. You know, we have several ways that you can give here at the church. If you're away, you need to drop by the church and come by here and drop it off. We have a designated uh, box that you can drop your tithes and offering at. Number two, you can mail it to the P.O. Box 1614. That's the Carol to Jordan 30112. And then thirdly, if you can use our push pay that we have, that is the Antioch Clean. Just search that Antioch Clean and you can pay your tithes and offering that way as well. There's also a designated um, option where you can even give the pastor a love offering. And I hear somebody say, you just had that first. Well, guess what? I'm on the 21st year now. So that, what you did, that's, that was the 20th. So you can still give an offering to the pastor if you desire. And then the fourth um, way, you can use the pastor first to push, uh, I mean, his cash app, and that's the dollar sign, and that's the Vincent Gerald Dorch. I know I don't have all of them up here, but many of you have been watching this, so you have it. All right, you talk about, we thank you right now for those who are preparing to give, and those who have to give. We ask that you do some Lord, and that they come short of nothing by giving back to you as you have blessed them. We love you, we adore you, what you're doing in that line. We speak, Father God, they shall be the head and not the tail. They shall be above and not beneath. They shall be a blessing, Lord, and not a curse. In Jesus' name we pray, and all of our children just say amen. Come on, rock that song right there. Y'all just come on and give back to the Lord wherever you're at in the home. We're just going to rock it right there, and then we're going to be ready to get some good laughing again. And then we'll be back next Sunday. Next Sunday we'll be right back, okay? Come on, let me see what y'all got, musicians. I can't hear y'all. Y'all got to do better than that. I got my boots on. Girl, who are you talking about? Girl, I cannot stand these kids. I'm talking about 
look, a miracle. A miracle? Yeah, old Dassel's granddaughter. That child got an ugly name. She come up to me talking about, oh, uh, Miss Shirley, I like your dress. My grandmother got one just like it. <laughs> Lies. That's what I'm saying. You got to tell these children right. You got to snip that lie right in the bud. In the bud. I told her, I said, look, girl, your grandmother could never. Ever. <laughs> now, you know Odessa got six dresses. That's about it. And I'm just being generous. I ain't never seen nothing on new fashion. Then you look at your grandma got a dress like this, baby. Uh, this is a custom piece. Uh-huh. People want to holler over my grandma. Your grandmother wish, your aunt wish, your mama wish, your mama wish. Uh huh. They had these pieces. You got to have these children early because if not, she gonna live in La La Land all the rest of the day. Her grandmother is shopping in Charlene's closet and not. And she is not. These custom pieces. Everybody ain't able, but he has graced me to do it. And you do it well.